time to go camping. Well, here it is. We're all packed. You know, when you go camping in Las Vegas, you have to drive down the highway to get there. We're making progress. First stop, we gotta get some gasoline. I just had a Culver's hamburger with a lightly buttered toasted bun, and it was really good. Next stop is gonna be the campground. Let's go check it out. We got a nice picnic table, place to have a fire, place to have a tent. What else could we want? Now this campsite is $10 per night. We're gonna stay here two evenings. So you fill out the little stub so you can claim your spot. So today is July 9th. Put in the $20 and we're good to go. One of the most important parts of camping is to identify the proper place for your tent. You want to have a, a place that's as flat as possible because if the ground is sloping and you don't put your head in the right spot, you'll have the blood rushing to your head all night long or if you, if you lay parallel to the slope, you'll end up rolling all the way down all night long. So I like to find the, the perfect tent spot and then level it out a little bit so that you're more comfortable as you sleep through the night. Nice and smooth. Now when I camp, I like to use a bedroll. Some people use a, an inflatable mattress or they bring like a backpack mattress that kind of inflates itself to give them just a little bit of padding. If you're young, like between the ages of very child age to all the way up to like 28, 29, or 30, you really don't need a pad under your sleeping bag. But when you get into your 40s and 50s, as in some cases may be, it's nice to have a pad of some sort under your sleeping bag. I prefer what the old cowboys would use. This is a western canvas bedroll. And it's an awesome bedroll because you can put your sleeping bags in here. You can put a banjo in there. I don't have a banjo in mine. But you can put your pillows and everything inside of the bedroll and just pack it all in one shot. It's convenient and it's nice and it's the reason the cowboys did it. And I'm kind of a cowboy at heart. So I'm going to use a bedroll that I brought out of my Forerunner to put in my modern fiberglass pole tent. Bedrolls are convenient. You just pop them on the ground, roll them out, and you're ready. Your bed is ready to go. What's nice about the bedroll is it comes with blankets, although not necessarily blankets, but they certainly work that way. If it was raining out and we weren't in a tent, the canvas would repel the water so I could stay somewhat dry even though it was raining. I just simply throw the sleeping bag on the bedroll and now my bed is ready. All right, for a quick review of your packing list, you need some sort of rain protection, a poncho, or in that case I have a slicker right there. It's a good idea to bring a variety of tarps in case the ground is wet or lumpy you can put underneath of the tent. It's always good to also have water cups and water bottles as well as plenty of firewood. A shovel is always good to have in case you need to dig something or a small trench to run water away from your tent. Sunscreen. It's always a good idea to have sunscreen. Then recreation materials. In this case we have a fanny pack so we can go hiking a book for some casual reading time and a frisbee to throw around at the summer camp. Good idea to have a good pair of gloves, some insect repellent in case you're in an area where there's a lot of mosquitoes. And of course a larger tub with ice water. And of course in here we have our food box which has a variety of chips and other important snacks that we can eat in case we're hiking or something along, along, along those lines. Our cooler of course to keep your pop cold and your hamburgers and those sorts of things. 
If you have a portable umbrella, sometimes it's a good idea to bring that along in case you're going to be camping in an area where you get a lot of heat and there's not a lot of shade. And of course your own chairs. Although many campgrounds have picnic tables, it's nice to have your own chairs so you don't have to be restricted to sitting where the picnic table is already located. Anytime you're camping, it's important that you have some, some health food. You know, food that will give you nutrition to keep you going for the, the activities that are coming up the next day, such as hiking or boating or fishing. In our case, we're going to go hiking. In that endeavor, I have some healthy potato chips, Lay's crinkly, original, wavy. I have some beans with some extra bacon added in and brown sugar and a hot dog. Those are the types of nutritional foods that you strive for when you're camping and you're doing athletic endeavor, endeavors such as hiking and boating and fishing. Now most campgrounds will come with a fire pit where you can build a fire if they're permitted at that particular time of year or in that particular national forest or state park. Now when you're building a fire you want to start with some very small pieces with lots of surface area that will burn easily. And you do that with a hatchet and you don't want to just start wailing away at it. You want to start at the very corner and just easily chop into it there so you can start to chip off the little bits of the sides there. Notice once the hatchet starts into the wood it begins to split. That piece is much more easy to work with. From there you can split this piece up a little bit more by very lightly working with the hatchet. So many people use the technique where you just go very slightly and then of course you split your hand away so the hatchet doesn't come towards you. But look at that terrific piece there. It will burn easily. This will help us start the fire to get it blazing to where it's a beautiful fire that we can enjoy some campfire songs next to. Now that there's a lot of kindling cut, I start by putting some newspaper right here in the middle. I'm going to throw some pieces of wood that will be very likely to burn just on top of the newspaper. Then we take some of the other large pieces of kindling to almost create a teepee effect above the newspaper. And once the wood starts on fire, you have a little more durability in your flame to catch more and more of the wood. We'll demonstrate that here for you in just a little bit. The time has arrived to start the fire. My goal is to start the fire with one match. Once the paper is burning and blazing, the goal is that it will start the small pieces of wood, the kindling that we placed upon the paper and in a teepee shape earlier. And with any luck, we will have a full-fledged campfire burning right here in front of all of us for us to enjoy and watch. Because now the smaller, thinner pieces that we built as a teepee will hopefully catch fire as well. Once you feel confident that they, they have become a blaze, then you can start to add a little bit larger pieces of wood into the interior of the teepee. One of the best parts about a campfire is if somebody knows how to play the guitar. I don't really know anybody who does, but I'm going to make the attempt anyway. I hear the train it comes rolling round the bend, and I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. I'm stuck in Folsom Prison, and time keeps dragging on. When those people keep a moving on down to San Antonio. Well, good morning. We slept pretty well. It got pretty chilly here overnight. The other campers had music going on much too late into the evening as well as running a generator through the night. Typically in a campground they have quiet hours and you shut off all your generators and music at that time. However, they did not comply. This morning we're going to demonstrate how to use the Coleman camp stove and how to make some delicious oatmeal. This is your basic Coleman camp stove. It has two burners as well as a propane that we hooked up to the right side of the propane stove. This particular stove is a deluxe model because it has an electric start. So you turn on the gas and then you turn the button 
and it creates a spark right here which ignites the gas that's on there. Then you can adjust your flame from there. Now when I make oatmeal, I put in the oatmeal and the raisins and walnuts and dried cranberries all together and then I just simply mix it up. A lot of people when they go camping like to cook a full-fledged breakfast including the bacon and the eggs and they do the toast. I don't do that. I like to go with the good old oatmeal, give you a good hearty start to the day just as if I was at home. We're starting up on a hike. We're going to follow this trail to see where it goes. We have a map, but we're not sure that this trail is the trail that's on the map because this looks more like a stock trail, but we're going to hike on up there and find out. This takes me back to a lot of the days when you had to round up the cattle for branding or for shipping. We had to take our horses into the bushes and pop them out of there. You can see this fence right here. Cattle have been walking along this fence thinking they want to be on that side of the fence, but they're stuck on this side, so they walk along looking for an opening. Just like I am. Now when you approach cattle on a trail, you just want to continue on the trail with a calm demeanor to kind of let them know with your body language you're not a predator coming to eat them, even though we eat them later on at McDonald's. Hello, old man tree. What wisdom do you have to bequeath upon me today? Ah, silence. Silence is everything. Are you okay? Are you just taking a nap? Did you eat too much air? You'll be all right, just, just rest there a minute. You'll be okay. Well, we made it to the top of this particular hike. Looks like the trail does go a little bit higher into the forest, but the view that we were after has been achieved. You know, I'm really not a big fan of when people carve into aspen trees because it leaves a permanent mark in the forest that a lot of people don't want to see. Please don't carve in aspen trees just because you saw that. I found a walking stick. It's a good sturdy walking stick. You know, it helps you on your balance. Plus, if you're being attacked by bears and wild animals, you can do your spins and take them on. Say, come on, bear. I'll take you on. Whoa. I'll take you on. Whoa. And then you realize, ah, oh, bear means you no harm. Oh, you're still sleeping? All right, well, yeah, we came by about an hour ago, hour and a half ago, but you keep resting, okay? You'll be okay. Hang in there, you'll be okay. All right, good night. This evening, our second night of camping, once again, we're using the Coleman camp stove to make hamburgers and heat up some beans that we brought from home. Meanwhile, the family reunion is enjoying themselves and their opportunity to drive the ATVs. Campgrounds can include a variety of experiences. Sometimes when you camp, you need to be prepared for inclement weather situations. Campfire number two. I'm going to use one mat to see if we can get it going. So I light it there, light it there, light it there, and light it there. Burn, baby, burn. Burn. <laughs> I 
one of the best things about camping, of course, is the campfire. And campfires are great for telling stories. In fact, I'd like to share a story with you about this exact very campground that we are camping in right now. It was about 10 years ago, and there was a family, a small family, who decided to go camping here. Mom and Dad, two boys, one 10 years old, the other 13. They were in a spot, possibly this one right here. And it was storming a little bit at night, similar to the night that we're having right here. And they set up the tent. And the father said, I need to use the restroom. And so he stepped away from the camp. Of course, the mom and the two kids were a little bit scared about that. And he didn't return. People were looking around like, where is he? Dad, dad. <laughs> and then that was it. They didn't know where he was. So the mom said, kid, wait right here at the tent. I, I need to go find him. I don't know what that sound was. So she went out. She went to the bathroom, the same area that he had gone. And she was looking and calling to him, Ralph, Ralph, where are you? <laughs> she was gone. The kids were in the tent. They heard that strange, evil sound. They were looking around like, I don't know what to do. Where do we go? Well, mom, dad, they were calling to him, calling and calling. No answer. So they began to think, maybe we need to go out there. They tried their flashlights. The, ba the batteries were dead. They don't know why the batteries were dead. They worked when they were at home. So they decided to set out following the narrow path to see if they could find what happened to their mom and dad. So they went looking, hunting around, hunting around. And in the distance, they heard, <coughs> they didn't know what it was. They began to get nervous. They began to get scared. They were calling, Mom, Dad, and the older brother said, wait right here, and all of a sudden, <laughs> what happened? The little brother was all by himself, and all of a sudden, ah! <laughs> it was the rubber chicken. Rubber chicken man had taken away the whole family. Ah! Nobody knew what to do. And to this day, the mystery is still alive. So if you ever hear a, <laughs> When you're camping here, beware. One of my least favorite parts about camping trips is packing up because it's time to go back to real life. Campsites all cleaned up. You should always leave a campsite cleaner than the way you found it. And everything's packed, so it's time to go back down the highway. Is it closed? I think we need gas. Do you, do you think it's closed? Well, the trip is over. It's been a long drive getting back. We had a good three days, three nights of camping, but the camping trip is not over. See, any sort of a camping trip that you take like this is not over until you've unloaded the vehicle and put everything away. When everything's put back, then you know you've finished the camping trip. Thanks for coming along. If we do another trip, maybe I'll bring you along again.